are at the very windy Millennium Park down in Peterborough. You see the purple balloons in the water. The rain has blown away. And we're here for the Purple Onion Festival. I'm so happy that the weather has perked up. I drove this morning through a wall of water. I thought it was going to be all over for this festival. But here we are. Let's go take a look, shall we? Pretty busy. I think everybody was just waiting to get out after the rain. This is a busy, busy festival. I don't know. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. I would be with Poetry Slam, and you can come to the Spill on Thursday and see phenomenal poets. We have a very diverse and engaging group of poets in the city. Oh. Thank you, Michael Bell, and thank you, Purple Indian Festival, and enjoy yourself. Hey, West Ryan, everybody. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so we're asking everybody to gather around, take part in the climate change rally, sponsored by four grandchildren. Before they get going, I just want to tell everybody that once we're after, we're going to announce the winner of the Pink Ray Barrel Contest. Okay, before I eat, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna spy some of the wonderful food. Good thanks to what we've got going on here today. Well, uh, we're from Elmhurst Resort, and everything we have to offer was raised right on our resort property. We're only 20 minutes from Peterborough. Uh -huh. So it's a mini three-course sampler of everything that we do. Uh, start with a kale Caesar, we've got pickled vegetable, a Korean-style short rib, and a fruit leather. Wow, sounds yeah. great. Mm. Looks just beautiful. Thanks. Have a great day. You too. Stuffed mushrooms. Great time for us. This is where you this is where you're working now? This is where I'm working now. So you're all qualified as a chef, a court on Or less, yes, or less. Okay, so what, what have we got going on here? We have uh, Bon Mai. It's traditional Vietnamese uh, street food that we put our own spin on. So it, we have yep. local pork roast pork loin, uh -huh. pickled carrots and daikon, and some really nice homemade peach chutney that we've had on that. And we also have some really nice sumac berry cookies. Wow. So we've taken the sumac, dried it out, ground it up, and put it into the cookie. You know, that makes a great tea too. It's uh, full of vitamin C yeah. and... It is really nice tea. I always do that. Are you still in Bob Yes, I am. Yes, I am. And I'm still at the same barber shop? Uh, that's right. Running for election this year. Awesome. So, As a counselor? Uh, sorry? Counselor? Uh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, Ward 7. And um, I come down here because they need transition towns on council in the city of Walker Lakes yeah. instead of these old fuddy duddy <laughs> types of people. We got stuck, all right? If I was still there, I'd go for you. Well, thank you very much. Have a great nice day. To see, you. see ya. Bye. Mid to late April, as opposed to uh, in May, black, black flies are peaking in early May now, rather than around the time of the, the May 24th weekend, as it used to be, just even in the 70s. Um, our lakes are are becoming ice-free earlier in the spring, freezing up. They're now being seen regularly. 
We now have a new butterfly, the giant swallowtail, which used to be restricted to extreme southern Ontario. We, um, we're seeing changes in, uh, in bird populations. Red-bellied woodpecker is another southern species. Southern flying squirrels too, whereas before it was mostly the northern flying squirrel and the gorthas. A trend study is now finding large numbers of the southern flying squirrel. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's actually hybridizing with the northern species, and we're finding hybrids of both. This is sort of akin to what's happening in the Arctic, where uh, polar bears are now beginning to mate with grizzly bears. Um, ragweed and poison ivy are more abundant and bigger than ever before, and there's been a lot of work done on this. It appears that ragweed and, and poison ivy are able to uh, take advantage of the increased carbon dioxide levels much more uh, easily than other plants. And it's also, the same, it's also the case with what's called common reed, an invasive species, the, also known as, um, as uh, well, they just called Phragmites. Yeah, the Phragmites. So, uh, this is very troublesome too, the non-native non invasive species that are, that are really taking a, strang <coughs> a stranglehold in so many areas. A lot of extreme events too. March 2012 saw probably the warmest month uh, of March on record when we had five days above 20 degrees Celsius.
aside for a couple of other songs and we're going to come back with a great climate change and do it now. Hey Andrew, how you doing? Hello, sir. It's great, thank you very much. You are perfect. Hey, there's something for you. Would you like? Oh, you like them? Oh, beautiful. That's awesome. So how did your uh, tomatoes do climbing up the, the vines in the greenhouse? Yeah, great. I'm, yeah, I'm, I don't want to grow tomatoes in the field anymore. Uh huh. No, beautiful, good harvest, really tasty. And they sort of persisted when all the outdoor tomatoes failed, so it's a nice little climate in there for them. Well, did you get much problem with the blossom end rot this year? No. Um, no, I didn't. Someone told me it's a um, lack of calcium caused by underwatering. Well, probably lack of like being able to absorb those nutrients, right? Yeah. I don't know, it might be specifically with calcium. I don't know. I just know when we don't water our plants and we issue, we get all sorts of issues. It's not when we don't water when they don't get enough water. Anyway, nice talking to you, Andrew. Have a great See day. You soon. There we go, everything the well dressed e biker needs to have. Bye. <laughs> This is a beautiful park, isn't it? You want to get my sign? Sure. Can I tell you about my sign? There you go. Tell me about your sign. Uh, firstly, you should know who I am. I'm the ghost of Sir John A. Macdonald. Uh -huh. And my sign is an invitation to people to come to Mark's Finer Diner on October 22nd to hear a greeting from the Maya elders uh, inviting the spiritual communities here in, in um, Canada to come down and develop a spiritual forum in uh, Maya land. And at the, at the event here in, in Peterborough, um, the elder by the name of Murray Wheatang, who is just, he's 92 years old, he's the last warrior of, in, of the Curve Lake Nation, uh -huh. and actually of Canada, he's the last living warrior from the Second World War. Um, anyways, we're naming a room after him at Mark's Finer Diner, and, and we're honoring his name 
which is being, he just was renamed three days ago by a Medowin elder who came up from Minnesota, and he was renamed um, Spotted Thunderbird. And so, if you October 22nd, I don't know what you're going to do with this video, but uh, Sir John A. In the spirit of Sir John A., he may have been a scoundrel, he may have been a skunk, but without him, we wouldn't have had Canada. Amen. Fantastic! Thank you very much. Okay. I will try and be there. Okay, great. Bring your camera. I'm going to give a short short story on Sir John A. Macdonald. What what people don't know about him, what most people don't know about him. Uh, my my information goes back to long before Sir John A. Macdonald. It goes back to uh, Lord Grave Simcoe when he. Um, he retained a fellow by the name of Edmund Jones. Uh, no, Augustus Edmund Jones. Augustus Jones. And Augustus was the surveyor for Southern Ontario. So that sets the scene for Augustus' son to marry the princess of the Mississauga. His son became the leader of the Mississauga. Their son ended up being the first Indian doctor in Canada. And who was one of its people he consulted to? Sir John A. Macdonald. So the number one consultant to Sir John A. is a First Nations son of a chief of the Mississauga. And people often wonder, they, they say, how is it the Mississauga got Toronto? <laughs> it was the doctor. The doctor made sure it should have been the Mohawk it, or the Six Nations or the, and it, it should have been anybody, but the doctor got it. And why did the doctor get it? The doctor's father methodized all the Mississauga. They all became Christians and eligible for funds. They were technically clean. And now they're, they're, they've got a hundred million dollars in the bank today. What tribe has got a hundred million dollars in their bank? I don't know. I know they do. <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. It's a, it's a tragedy because they've been so bleached, bleached white from the, the traditional people's point of view that uh, the Indians themselves don't know which who's who, except the spiritual guys. I hang out with the spiritual guys, and that's why I take the role of Sir John A. Because Sir John A., you can't be worse than this man. You can't be worse. But you built Canada. You built Canada, Sir John A. Macdonald. How did he do it? He went overseas with some papers, got them to pass it over there. He sweet-talked them into passing an act here, and then came back and said, this is it. And we've been fighting about it ever since. We didn't know why. We didn't know how. But we had the permission of his doctor's family. So there was no trouble with the Indians right across the country. Because the Mississauga would look after everybody. Well, they didn't. They didn't. And they should be called to task. Not our federal government so much. Yes, they should be called to task, pardon me. <laughs> but the, the uh, Mississauga should also be called to task. Because they're keeping what they got hidden. They're not telling people what deal they made for Toronto. Another anecdote I left out of the part of the story of the, the, um, Augustus Jones, when he was working for Lord Simcoe, it was his wife who wanted to keep the Toronto Island special. And it was through the surveyor that whatever deals got passed anywhere, the Toronto Islands were not included. This was done by decree, and, and, but the Mississauga, they don't tell the truth about this. No one tells the truth about it because they can't find the truth. The truth was never written down. It was the contract between Sir John A. and his, and his um, drinking buddy, chess playing partner. He used to play chess with uh, Sir John A. And, and, and Dr. Edmund Jones. Peter Edmund Jones. So this, this story hasn't been told in, in Canada yet because the... Um, the historians confuse um, Reverend Peter Jones with Dr. Peter Jones because they both had the same Indian name, Kekagwinabi. So the difference is that one was the father and one was the son. 
And now, uh, I discovered this by accident. It wasn't through any intentional research. I didn't give a hoot for Sir John A. beyond last year. I just ran into him in, um, in, in the parks of Kingston. And I, I listened to how, much, how little people knew about Sir John A. because I knew nothing. I then started to look into what I knew about other things and saw the connection between uh, Sir John A. and the Indians and my friends' families. Their, their connection with Sir John Because my friend's family had at one point 10,000 acres of land outside of Brantford. We don't know what happened to him. He can't track it. It's not in the paperwork anywhere. But the, he had 10,000 acres of land. Got confused with Indian politics now. I don't know how or why. So, I guess I've told the story that the other things about Sir John A. most everyone knows. They know he founded Manu Life when he was Prime Minister. They, um, they know the McDonald Carche Freeway across Canada. They, they know uh, that he built the railway. And they know some good things. They know he was an alcoholic. But what they don't know is that he sold this out to his, to his doctor. He gave his doctor and the doctor's family now needs to come to the table. I don't know when or how. It may just be a story, too. So that's a story from uh, Sir John A. McDonald. Okay, so these are the protest tables. This is a fluoride free Peterborough. Incredible research they're doing here. They're trying to get fluoride out of the water. Get the F out of our water. Well, Charlene, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. That's good, that's good. It's so Before nice. I agree. Yes, oh, so, I so nice to see the weather. Oh, yeah. We had uh, so much rain here this morning. Yeah. But it cleared up. So you've had a busy day here? It's been, yes, I been have. good? Yes. I hear you've been here all day. Yes, and um, lots of very good discussion. People are, are really aware of what's going on here. Now I was here last year and there was there were some people who were on board and there was definitely some skeptics. Now are you noticing fewer skeptics? Uh, I haven't had any. I had one young girl though. She liked the truth brush and she asked me if I had any truth paste to go with. I thought, well that might be a good uh, little prop. Yeah, she gets some truth paste. It's the Kool-Aid of truth paste. <laughs> How are you doing? I'm just doing fantastic, thank you very much. How is... Mm, this old flame, wax. And this is the uh, Council of Canadians, and here we have a raging granny. Yes. What a great voice you have. It was that was wonderful. Are you, are you both raging grannies? Uh, well, yes, by extension. Yeah. Uh, She's an honorary. Elizabeth is an honorary. Four years majority. As of right now. Oh, perfect. I thought you might be a raging granny in training. She doesn't need any training. She's got a fantastic voice. She can sound like Janis Joplin at the drop of a hat. Well, it was actually amazing, and that's what we need is people to stand up and sing and get dressed in colorful clothes. Now, do it now. We've got to plan a different future, and we need to start right now. That's right, right now. Yeah. Perfect. I think we are starting right now. I think this is what's happening. Like, look what's happening in New York. And it's not just New York, it's all over the world. People like our group are just making a stand for the earth itself and for the health of ecosystems everywhere. We've got to stop this way of life and we have to stop it immediately. We, and we're coming together to do that's, that's the promise. Yeah. Well, I think we've finally reached that point where, where people have just given up, either on their elected officials or anyone else actually speaking up and doing something, and it's, it's got to be us. But we've, we've listened to these people speak and nothing seems to happen. It needs to be us now that takes this yeah, by the... old systems don't serve us 
know, we have to we have to stay in touch. We have to listen carefully. We have to learn, keep learning. We have to it's a healing process. It's, we're healing the earth and ourselves at the same time. Well, you, you know I'm running for council, right? Pardon? You, you know I'm running for council in City of Quarter Lakes? You are. I am. I'm so happy that you are. Uh, yeah, we, we need to take some transition town and some raging granny mentality yeah. into um, that, that funny, funny space that none of us really seems to understand, huh? Well, that's great. Bravo for you. Well, thank you very much, and you have a great day. You too. Not working for a newspaper? Well, this is my own news channel. Oh. So I'm uh, basically reporting on uh, anything and everything to do with the environment and things that are going to change the world for the better. Well, I'm just getting a real close up of this so that everyone can. Did you sign the petition? Say the word and I'll change the page. <laughs> the V8 engine and automatic transmission out of a pickup truck. So you put the sling on the apex and uh, it'll carry about uh, at least 660 pounds per apex. Well, it's amazing. It just distributes uh, all of the weight. <laughs> yeah. Hi, Steve. Hi. That's all. And if you make it into a cottage, you get plenty of room to put an upstairs bedroom. Yeah.